All right, next we have Maraz Madani. He's a Syrian tech and media entrepreneur, and he's the founder and CEO of Aragik, one of the most uh, visited Arabic websites in the world. So please join me in welcoming uh, Malaz. Hello, everyone. I'm very nervous. <laughs> Um, I have to make this confession. Um, I never done any sort of uh, lengthy speech like uh, like today. And uh, the scariest thing that I am at the MIT <laughs> and uh, in front of, I think, uh, geniuses here with very high IQs. So it's very difficult to sell you any story, really. <laughs> we are all friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, today I'm going to take you through some uh, fancy slides, includes numbers, growth, you know, millions, page views, fans, etc., etc. And uh, this morning I was thinking, like, okay, I want to make a point um, out of this uh, presentation or this speech, which is if I can make it <laughs> from my bedroom in, in London, I think anyone here, uh, you guys, students at the MIT, can make it 10 times better. So uh, I hope this uh, little story can uh, inspire you. So who am I? I'm, uh, I'm from Syria. I am... Uh, I belong to a middle-class family. Um, I had a, an average education, I would say. Um, it took me five years to graduate from the low school. I was terrible at it. I just got passed. Um, in 2006, um, I decided to go to the UK to learn English language. Um, my dad's friend promised me, he said, OK, if you want to go and work in Dubai, you have to get some English language literacy, and then you can join me. I went there. I like the country, and I stuck. <laughs> um, so I was planning to study um, international commercial law, masters in international commercial law. Um, two weeks before uh, the beginning of the course, the university agent called me, and he said, oh, sorry. We're not going to run the course. Uh, apparently, they didn't have um, enough applicants. So I said, OK, so what should I do? Because, you know, uh, staying and, and, and living abroad, and, you know, uh, it costs money if you're going to stay there and live there. He said, oh, why don't you do MBA? They're, you know, they're interrelated. I said, really? I said, yes, go ahead. So I did an MBA. <laughs> Um, so in 2009, I graduated with two different degrees. So I have a low degree, which is worth nothing if I'm living in the UK, and an MBA. And I'm not really good at any of you know any any of them. I'm not like you know <laughs> a business. You know, I didn't do like a, a BA for five or six years. Studied business and marketing. Anyways, um, so I did this internship about digital marketing at one of the, uh, I would say, leading education companies in, in London. Uh, I was at the age of 25. My manager was 19 years old. <laughs> and uh, anyways, so uh, I continued my, my journey at, uh, at Kaplan, the name of the company. And within two years, I progressed and... Uh, um, I managed to become the regional marketing manager there. So, um, Arab Spring, 2011, the rise of social media networks. Everyone is on Facebook, on Twitter. And since I live in the UK, and uh, being exposed to, you know, a tremendous amount of uh, content, 
um, in English language about technology and, and science. And at the time, there was like a rise of, you know, uh, content platforms that embraces technology and science. Like, obviously, you all know, like, you don't know, the Wired magazine or, or Mashable or all these platforms. So I started wondering, is there such a thing in, in Arabic? I'm not that techy. I mean, yes, uh, since I do online uh, marketing and, and media, I understand web, I understand apps, uh, I understand the digital world, uh, but I don't understand, uh, you know, what you do, guys. Like yesterday, architecture and and uh, AI and cryptocurrencies and blockchain and stuff like that. So I couldn't find any content in Arabic that uh, covers uh, this type of content. So I said, okay, let's do some experiments. I went to GoDaddy. I bought a domain, cheap hosting, and uh, started, you know, translating a few articles, and I put it online. <laughs> the feedback was tremendous. Um, I used my expertise on online media and, and, and um, search engine optimization and, and social media to promote my content, and you know, the site started tracking, you know, more and more traction. So I said, okay, I want to build a team. What should I do? Um, the, media land in, uh, the, um, the media landscape in the, in the Arab world at the time was split into either like a news websites, you know, like al yom if you are in Egypt or Al Jazeera or Al Arabiya, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you have individual bloggers that you find on blog post or WordPress. And then you had the forms, which were about to die. So it was very challenging to find the right people who can write good content. Start looking for people on WordPress and blog posts. Um, I found a few really good uh, people. I pitched the idea, they liked it, and then we start publishing. I created a logo, and uh, we began our journey. So, so what is Aragik now? So Aragik is a, a, a news magazine in, uh, sorry, it's an, a news magazine uh, focused on creating high quality articles and videos in Arabic language, focused on technology, pop science, art and education. Um, uh, I'm going to take you through some of, no, it's not here, it's here. So, since 2012, we have grown to more than 3 million um, unique visitors hitting our website on a monthly basis. We've grown our social media community to more than 3 million users. Uh, from GCC, Levant, and uh, North Africa. And you can see the stat here. Um, we've done tremendous amount of work. Maybe I should take you more to tell you more what, what sort of content we, we produce. Um, so this is some examples of the content we produce if you read Arabic. So the first article, for example, in the art section, uh, five tips for entrepreneurs that you can take from the founder or the social network movie. Another one is about the problems that uh, uh, Arab programmers face in the Arab world and what, you know, how to overcome these, these problems. Um, so today we are a team of uh, 10 people we are all working remotely. I'm based in London. Eight of which are content editors and videos and social media. Uh, so each editor is a subject matter expert in its field. So for example, the technology editor knows everything about te technology. He's a, you know, very well educated and you know, uh, knows a lot. Uh, under each editor, uh, there's a network of 
content creators and content writers. And we have a proofreaders. So content creators pitch the story, uh, the article idea to the editor. Uh, the editor approves it, goes to proofreader, and then gets published. Uh, we use Slack, Trello, Zoom for our uh, meetings. And uh, here's a team. Very talented from Syria and, uh, and Egypt. Please take a photo and tweet it. I think they will be very proud. <laughs> um, and mention us as well. <laughs> so that's really our, uh, our story. And this is the point that I wanted to make, which is um, someone with average education coming from middle class family. Um, I managed to create this. So I'm sure like you guys, you're very privileged to be at the MIT. You could do 10 times better. Uh, my company is profitable, and I have a big team, and we continue to grow. That's it. Uh, all right, so we have a little bit of time for questions. So anyone want to ask Madaz some questions? All right, we have uh, some people going around with mics. And I'll start off here. Hello. Hi, hi, Malaz. Thank you so much for your talk. I'm really interested in Arabic content, but I feel like there's still so much of a barrier that people who are the most literate in Arabic, because it's a difficult language and so many of us are in a diaspora, don't have the tools to be on a computer and writing and talking about it. So what are ways that we can overcome that? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. <laughs> so, if you can simplify it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, don't worry. So I just feel like there is a lack of Arabic contact because the people who speak Arabic the best m might not have the time to sit down and write about content that's not, like, let's say, politically related. Is that the case, or have you seen elsewhere uh, something different? Or well, most of the content creators are genuinely university students interested in their subjects. So for example, the tech content, for, we have engineers, we have even engineer graduates from, from Egypt, from Jordan, from Lebanon, from, from Syria. And these guys, they have a lot of knowledge and also they seek ex exposure. So I'll tell you something. Over the past seven years, I would consider Arigik as a university for content. <laughs> Because over the years, so many people actually started with us, and now they are working for Al Jazeera, for Al Arabiya, and they made a career out of writing content. And before that, they, it wasn't their profession. So, uh, so yeah. Thank you. Next question. We have one here. I have a quick question here from the back. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the future of our geek over the next five years? What is going to change? What is going to stay? Uh, what could we imagine the platform to transform into? Okay. Thank you. So we are an independent media platform. I mean, bless us. Okay, because if you look at the media landscape in the Middle East, it's all funded. 90% uh, of all websites, anything you read in Arabic has got some sort of, I don't know, political or ideological agenda, we don't. Um, so our future is really on how to monetize the traffic that we are, we are getting. So maybe we can leverage our three million users who come into the website um, and introduce maybe um, a new vertical that could be an e-commerce website, for example, selling uh, consumer electronics and make money. <laughs> so um, I think that would be the future, uh, introducing maybe a new vertical, and also we just continue to grow as any other media company. Well, I was going to ask a very similar question. What, what are the main challenges for the growth of your, of your company, if you can say the top three challenges? Top, uh, top three challenges. Um, okay, so the first challenge, which I think I just 
kind of managed to overcome it, which is monetization. So content creators in the, um, in the Middle East, especially like websites, they have three channels to monetize their content. Number one, uh, to find an agency, which, which is in Dubai. And the market there, it's extremely difficult to penetrate. Um, I mean, I could put many words just to say it indirectly, but I'm gonna say it bluntly. The, the media market is corrupted, so it's all about who you know, uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's networking, really. So it's not about the quality of the content, and it's not about the you reach or how many users visit your website, etc. So that's uh, first channel. Second channel is ad networks, such as like Google, uh, Google AdX, or Google, Google Ads, and direct advertising. So my challenge was how to scale my business from programmatic advertising. And this is impossible, because the difference between selling your media via ad networks versus selling your media via an ad agency, it's a huge. So for example, on Google ad network, you sell an 1,000 impression for, let's say, one USD. Whereas if you are selling your media via an agency, you sell it for 25 USD. So you can, you can see the difference. Um, so in the last two years, my focus was absolute on growth, get the number very high to create a good revenue stream coming from ad networks. So that one side. The other thing, we, I introduced um, a new revenue channel which is a sponsored content. So what happens in the past two years, um, we've been pushing our products to startups um, in, uh, in Jordan, in, in, in Gulf, um, and in, in Egypt. So these guys, they approach us and they say, okay, I would like to publish a piece of content on your website, review my service, review my, my product. We do that, we declare that to the users, and it's been a great, and now 40 to 50% of all revenue coming from sponsored content, and people love it. Uh, I think part of the problem that technical people doesn't like writing. Writing for audience, and it is something here in the US, they teach it, like Columbia, I'm, I study creative writing in Columbia now, and they have like four courses on writing about science, just how you can write science to regular audience. Yeah. Well, in Syria, we don't have a program called creative writing. It's not a thing. Yeah. And that's in the whole Arabic content. And the problem now, we are losing the language. So if, even if I'm going to translate the content that I get educated in Colombia, I don't know the terminology in Arabic. It's not a live terminology because it's yeah. produced in English. So what I'm thinking is, how can Arabic and the many others who are trying to translate Coursera or other word try to, how we can create a new terminology, new dictionaries? We need to, <laughs> yeah, because some words now in the science and tech doesn't yeah. have a meaning in Arabic. Yeah. So how are we going to reach the audience? And anything can help well, to do uh, writing, to yeah, encourage well, MIT students to write. I think it's a good question. The way we overcome it, we just put it in English, basically. So, okay, because if I don't have the right word, so I have to use the English term for it. And this is how it works. So we put the word as it is in English, and we define it in Arabic. So uh, this is the only way. All right, I think uh, that's the time we have for questions. Um, thanks so much, Maraz. Thank you very much. Uh, again, check. Remember to tweet this picture if anyone wants to take. You want to stand under the th so they can take a picture of you. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, check out ourgeek.com. And now uh, Natasha, one of our organizers, will be introducing the next set of speakers. Thank you. And as you're coming in, remember to keep it nice and cozy. We're all friends here, so don't, you know, move to the front.